x is a solution of this Bessel function, then that's what we said over here, right? This jpx is a solution of this differential equation. <clears throat> so, all right. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to just uh, make some transformations, and I say that I'm going to put x equal to lambda t, where lambda is a constant. So if x equal to lambda t, then my dy by dx, y prime over here is dy by dx. dy by dx becomes dy by d lambda t, because x is your lambda t. And basically, you're going to take this lambda out, so this is 1 over lambda dy by dt. So dy by dx changes to 1 over lambda dy by dt. So we have changed the independent variable from x to t, and this lambda comes in front. Similarly, I need a y double prime over here, so I'm going to differentiate this guy once again. So d squared y by dx squared, that would be a ddx of dy by dx. And x again, I'm going to change it with this lambda t. And again, you know x over here by lambda t. So this is your d by d lambda t and dy by d lambda t. And these two lambdas are constant. They come out, so that becomes 1 over lambda squared. And this simply becomes d squared by dt squared. So we have changed this independent variable from x to t, so the second derivative, you have to multiply by 1 over lambda squared before you can convert it to uh, t over there, for the second derivative. For the first derivative, you can divide by lambda. For the second derivative, you can divide by lambda squared. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to put, so I'm going to put these transformations into this, you know. I'm going to say my d squared by dx squared is this quantity which I have written over here. Lambda squared. What is it? x squared is your, x squared is your, x squared is your lambda squared t squared. And y double prime is your 1 over lambda squared d squared y by dt squared. And there's an x, so that is your lambda t. And dy by dt is your 1 over lambda dy by dt, which I have here, 1 over lambda dy by dt. And x squared again becomes lambda squared t squared, and that is your p squared, and this is your y equal to 0. So these lambdas, they cancel, and I'm going to get t squared multiplied by d squared by the dt squared plus t dy by dt plus lambda squared t squared minus p squared y equal to zero. So this is my transform, uh, transform this is the equation, you know. Before we had x, now I have lambda, lambda t I have. It was x squared. So basically what I did, I have changed uh, the y is now a function of t. Okay, which is a yt. <clears throat> Alrighty, so that's what I wrote over here. Uh, so I have written over here like this. t squared y double prime plus t y prime plus lambda squared t squared minus p squared y equals to zero. Now y is a function of t, and lambda is a constant which is greater than zero, and t is greater than zero. That's how we take it. So this is called the modified Bessel equation. And here, what is the solution here now? When there was x, it was jpx. The solution was jpx, jpx, when I have an x over here. But instead of x, I have your lambda t. So now here, in this equation, we have jp lambda t is the solution. So what we did here, here, we fixed the p, 
and we can change in, in, in okay now now okay we got so far but really you know once we know I mean this T or X you know really is just uh, it doesn't matter you know so I now I can change I, okay I fix my P and I know what my lambda is it's just a constant so I'm going to change my independent variable back to X and you know whether you write independent variable as T or X or P or Q it doesn't really matter the differential equation remains the same, you know. So I change it back, and so I write it x squared y double prime plus x y prime plus lambda squared x squared minus p squared y equals zero. And the solution for this one is lambda x, lambda p x, not lambda t because I've changed it back to x now. Oh, you might be wondering why am I doing all this? Uh, Basically, I want to use this thing in the orthogonality property. And, uh, you know, we have done in the past eigenfunctions, eigenvalues, and orthogonality, and complete set of functions and all that. For that, there is a general theorem, but we are not, not going to do that. But anyway, so <clears throat> we have done this kind of thing before. So, alrighty, so we have x greater than zero, and there's a, it's a, x basically it's a full real line, you know. X equals zero to wherever you want to go. But what happens is in most of the problems that you're going to do, like heat transfer or fluid mechanics or whatever, uh, in most of the problems, you know, the domain of x uh, is finite, so we're going to take a zero L, you know, like it's a box or cylinder or a sphere or, you know, it's, it's a finite, you know. So we're going to take x from 0 to l. <clears throat> x 0 to l. Now you saw from this thing, you know, that my g of x, it's got <clears throat> infinite number of roots. You know, x1, x2, x3, blah, 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 for each p. But I'm fixing my p. Let's say for 1p. That's what I said somewhere here. Fix p. So, jpxi equal to zero, where x1, x2, x3, these are the roots, you know. That's where this function jpx is going to go to zero. <clears throat> so, we know that jpxi is going to be zero, and where xi are the roots of jp, Ashni, I'll call you later. I'm in a class, okay? I'll, I'll call you later. I have a class. Okay, Is it urgent? Huh? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll call you afterwards. I'm teaching a class right now, okay? Lambda I L. <clears throat> so we are fixing our L. Then instead of then we can choose lambda I equal to X I over L and where I equal to one, two, three, so on and so forth. Then your JP lambda I L is going to be zero for all your I equal to one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Okay, where lambda i I have defined as xi by L and i equal to 1, 2, 3. So, alrighty. So if we fix the domain of this function as L 
And if P is fixed, you know, P is uh, all these things, I'm just taking one P. If P is fixed, we have an infinite number of functions, JP, lambda i, x, <clears throat> where x goes from 0 to L. If x becomes equal to xi, then this guy is 0. So this is for general, you know, so that's how I can define my, in terms of lambda i, I'm defining my this function now. Instead of jpx, I'm going to define this function in terms of lambda i, where lambda i is defined in terms of the roots of this equation. So, these vessel functions, jp lambda i x, when you fix the p, are orthogonal in this domain, 0 to L, with respect to the weighting function x. Just like you know anyway. So 0 to L, x, jp, lambda i x, multiplied by jp, lambda jx, dx, equal to 0, when i, for all i, which is not equal to j. I, if I, I and j are not equal, then it is 0, and we have done this thing before. But if i equal to j, i equal to j, then 0 to L x, jp squared lambda i x dx, it's not equal to 0, and it's going to be lambda squared divided by 2, jp plus whole, uh, 1 whole squared lambda i l, and this is going to be lambda squared by 2, j squared p minus 1 lambda i l. So that's what we're going to do, and this is what we're going to do with the orthogonality property. We're going to do it next time. Uh, thank you very much. I uh, just want two lectures. We'll finish this one, and uh, then we'll go on to Legendre polynomials and Hermit polynomials. I may not do because of the lack of time. I may not be able to do the complete derivation of this, but you know, basically, it's the same kind of a thing. But I'll go over, you know, what these are and. Uh, solve their application. Thank you very much.